It's been a little while since we checked in on Baby AGI. Let's take a little look at the latest version, Baby Elf AGI, has either achieved consciousness or become a really indispensable piece of software. Baby Elf AGI was released just this week and is a big departure from what's gone before. I've featured it on the homepage of Replit, so you can go there and fork it, or you can follow the links in the description below. Now, the key difference here is this is the first version to use multiple files and allow it to write its own code. So we are in a very exciting place, but let's see what it can do. We're gonna fork the REPL, and now the keys are all in secrets by default, so there's no faffing around there like we've had to do before. We're gonna to go to secrets and add in our open API key and our SERP API key as well, so it can do searching and the AI stuff. This version of Baby AGI only uses GPT 3.5, so it's actually really quite cheap to run much better than the last version that we looked at, which was using GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 to try and keep the costs down. This is quite a cheap and efficient model to run. Okay, let's run it and see what this basic functionality is like, because the objective is quite interesting. Create a new skill that creates a poem based on an input. One of the interesting developments that's happened since last time was the fact that we can actually do dependencies in parallel now. So where it's picked a task that isn't reliant on anything, it can run that in the background and not be worried about which order to do things in. This speeds up the execution massively. Okay, so this is interesting. It's reading its own code to understand the concepts. And, well, it's absolutely smashing through this. The speed is incredible compared to the last version we looked at. Oh, well, and it's done. Let's try it one of our own. In our examples before, we done a lot of SWOT analysis, and that's something that's a business case that's really a lot of effort. That's something that I'd love to have a skill for. So let's change the prompt to create a generic SWOT analysis. and. <laughs> wow, it's bombed through that. Let's take a look at the code that it's generated. It brings in the OpenAI key. It's got examples of input. It's got examples of what it wants. Oh, look, we can even go in and edit the temperature. And the temperature is the measure of, sort of how much content it generates from scratch, how much randomness there is. The higher that number, the more random it is. The lower the number, the more accurate it is. So we could even go and turn that down to zero if we wanted. So there were no hallucinations in the data at all. This is really quite cool. So let's take a look at how we actually use that then, because if we have a look down the code, there's a list of skills that it's going to load. These must be the file names. Let's add in our SWOT analysis generator skill. There we go. And change the objective to generate a SWOT analysis of replit.com, because we've done that before. And we'll run it. Okay. <laughs> this error suggests that we haven't included the web search skill. So let's add that. Okay. Oh, well, it's searching the web now. And notice the dependencies. They're not just going one after the other this time. Now they are working in groups and they're waiting for certain tasks to complete and then working in parallel in the background. And this is much faster than... The, whoa. Whoa. This is much faster than before. And yeah, that SWOT analysis is pretty good, isn't it? It feels... We've, we've done this before in one of the previous examples. And this feels a lot more cohesive, a lot more accurate, a lot more like somebody that understands business might have done it. And we've even got it in the output file. And the interesting thing is we've got all the data it collected as well. So actually there's a lot of backtracking we can do with this. This is much more useful as an autonomous agent. The previous versions I found frustrating because it would do a bunch of work and then dump a one line output into a file or put it on the screen. And you couldn't go back and, and look at the context it was using. This is brilliant. This is so much better for me validating the work that it's done and being sure that as to be making decisions, the autonomous agent has used the correct data to process that. Okay, let's see if we can get it to create a skill to actually make a website. That was one of the limitations previously, was that it couldn't actually generate and save code. Now, it's definitely generating and saving code at the moment, but can it do that on an arbitrary vector? Let's see. Well, okay, it seems to have got a good set of tasks. Okay. Oh, I'm a little concerned with the name of the file it's generated. Generate JS file. Is this just a JavaScript generator? Let's set an objective to build a landing page for our classic, the commemorative Robostop, Robocop statues. The commemorative Robocop statues. And, ah, uh, okay. So that skill wasn't great. Let's just see, as a generic prompt then, let's see if we can get it working. And <laughs> it's always a bit disappointing when, when I see this. I know this isn't what it's for, but like, that's my dream. My dream is that these autonomous agents can just go and you know, make me that that site that I need and I'll go in and tweak it later and again it's got the plan if if what you're doing is generating a list of instructions to give to another person or an, another AI 
this is great, but it isn't quite what I'm looking for just yet. But we know the limitations. This is a task system. This is a, a knowledge-based research system. So let's give it something that's a bit more knowledge-based and see how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna create a, try and create a skill to create a script for a video now. Now my hope is with this, that what it'll do, it'll work out what a script format is and create a prompt that can generate that. Let's include that. Let's get rid of the SWOT analyzer skill because that's causing some weirdness. This is interesting though. The context that the AI is getting must take into account the skills that it's seeing as well. So if it sees the SWOT analysis skill, it is going to the effort of making a SWOT analysis. So it's quite cool. Okay, it doesn't seem to be scraping the most relevant search results, but let's see how it goes. Okay, so we've got a, let's take a look at that file then and <laughs> okay, again, this is the fun with LLMs, isn't it? The LLM just gave up on that one. Let's let's get rid of that then. Let's see, uh, without a skill, can it do a script for a video on HTMX, which is a reasonably new standard? Oh, okay, so it has generated a script, but for some random characters that it's generated. I don't know who Olivia is, but she's very enthusiastic about HTMX. <laughs> Okay, let's change that prompt up a little bit to give it a little bit more instruction. Now, this is, this is an important thing, and please do go see our video on prompt engineering to get a bit more about this. Sometimes, the first time you fail with an AI, it is the prompt that's the problem. Give it more context, give it more information, give it more instruction, and it might develop what you want. So, I'm going to explain what my video format's like. It's presented by me, who appears via green screen. Uh, I'm an aging millennial who uses the term dude unironically. I'm knowledgeable and I'm good at explaining complex topics in a clear way. Now let's see what it does. Okay, so it's got it. We've got those dependencies again, which are not reliant on the first ones, which is quite nice. Okay, it's got some interesting results. Get them together. It starts to pick up speed as we get to those dependencies. Hey, that's actually quite good. <laughs> and it does talk a little bit like me, an aging millennial. That's not bad at all. I, I, I might actually make this video. That'd be a bit of fun. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. It's certainly a great starting point. I mean, I could pick that up. I could edit it myself. I could get into a good flow of having that style of video. Good man. Well, that's, that's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really pleased with the development of, of Baby AGI and where it is. Let's try some classic examples. Let's look at the top five AI trends and see if we can get them summarized. Oh, that's pretty cool. They're very generic though. Let's tweak that prompt. Let's change the uh, prompt a little bit. Recent generic three ideas for YouTube videos have been made in the Replit YouTube channel that involve skills in some way with Langchain. Langchain is the most popular of the AI frameworks. So that's something that we are looking into doing more content on. And that's ah, not bad. I can't, I, I'm not 100% sure how the voting app would work. I, I think it's hallucinating a little bit there, but the other two, are quite solid. Well, do you know what? I think that Baby AGI is getting to a point now where I can actually use it to do knowledge-based work and I can be reasonably sure that the results it's going to generate are not going to disappear and are going to be reasonably useful. I'd love to be able to see what could happen if I could tweak that app to GPT-4 though. I know the cost would be significantly higher, but I'd love to see what that extra inference, that extra understanding and knowledge does to the output. Maybe I can ask nicely for a toggle next time. If you want to play with Baby AGI and especially Baby Elf AGI, it's currently trending on the front page of Replit. Otherwise, go to the link in the description below and fork the REPL, put in your API keys and go for it. And see what autonomous agents can do for you. They're not just hype. They are getting really useful now.